until timer says one. Wow, okay. Oh, I'm gonna die. Thank you, Hueba. What? Womu! Mezame Tamae! Waga Aruji Tachiyo! That was a small glimpse, but we also have the real-life Amogus situation in the pet rework workshop. No one is right and everyone's pointing left and right. Do you spot the BS here? What? How did this even get out? I'm Noodle Sensei, trying to explain what the heck is going on this time. No matter what AI you're using, machines can't fix user error. Not only is that slide half wrong, I spotted factual errors in the text of the workshop, and some misleading things. The wiki itself is wrong in half the places on some of the paths, and basically no one who's commenting or making videos got everything right this time. This is more proof that people don't read anything unless they have to. So here is the correct TLDR. Their main three goals are improving pet tanking, adding new interactive mods, we were only shown these four in the dev stream, more about these at the end, and adapting all the existing mods to this new situation. Instead of completely dying, pets will have a default 60 second timer, with many mods to help with that. All the revivable pets can be revived manually, instantly, and sentinels will have a new damaged state while their timer runs. We have actual confirmation that the two mandatory mods everyone run will still work when the pet is KO. And with this they're gonna get rid of a very useful but obscure bug. We've had it for years, mods on your pet will still be active for 15 seconds after death. If this actually gets fixed that's going to make all the pets worse off. Because I'm inclined to trust a huge pile of data and used ChatGPT to confirm some calculations, I can tell you that that 50% value, not only is it based on erroneous data, it is completely bogus, more like 360%. About the revised hunt values, they're gonna be even simpler than the Warframe rework. All the pet values will be there, right at rank 0 just as all the robotics used to have before the change. Every pet that is <laughs> breedable won't be needing these 200% bonuses. They will look just like these. All of the old values in this table are the base rank values before those bonuses. Moas will no longer be the runt of the kennel, leaving the weakest spot to base shade. Yes, some things are sus, like 3 out of 5 primes getting less shields than their base, but there is a pattern. They are actually trying to bring the base closer to the primes, where Carrier and Worm Prime used to be double their base version, now it's closer. Worm Prime is still going to be by far the tankiest sentinel, by 50% more EHP than its base version. Years ago, when they were still doing events, these abilities were nerfed specifically for scaling objective defenses, and this used to apply to pets. Now pets are gonna be treated as another full member of the squad and get the full effect. There was an obscure and unmentioned functionality that allowed some healing effects be transferred as part of the Link Health mod, and this is getting removed because everything that is defensive should now be working in full force. The massive EHP changes you're about to see are mostly due to these mods being greatly improved and most pets are getting significant armor base buffs. The regen mods and the sacrifice will now modify the revive timer instead and repair kit is getting a greater benefit to sentinels than the pet mod because they actually will still have trash armor. All the link mods are standardized as well. It's not going to be a simple decision like before. There will be few times you actually want to link over the base mods. The shield recharge mod is getting an additional effect of shortening the delay before recharge starts. It's not replacing the base effect. 
But I don't have tanking mod space anyway. Now that you've seen all the mod values, it's time to put them all together. After analyzing 3 times as much data as I show here, here's what I found. The average buffs will be much bigger than what DE said. <clears throat> Not only are they buffing base values, they're also buffing the mods. There are big changes, especially for the walking robots. They go from literally the worst to second strongest if we exclude Venaris. On average, both Venaris will still be the strongest pet type. They never needed any buffs. And they also never had any shields. As a category, the three Kavats will be the weakest type, but individually, Shade will be the weakest pet. Oh my god! Hey, humongous buffs, base changes, and new mood buffs, and we are not even done with all the mods, and it's already this huge. Ha! What's 50%? The lowest buff that wasn't erroneous value. Carrier Prime, 145%. The highest EHP buff after months, Garmer Hound, 774%. In conclusion, not only are all the pets much stronger, there are significant differences in the balance. They've brought the lowest ones much higher together when comparing the toughest to the weakest pet. Unmodded, it used to be 9.8 times, down to 2.6 times and after mods from 7.2 to 4.6. Old Venari Prime was only 50% tankier than the new weakest Sentinel. All pads averaged together. Before mods, the uplift was 160% and the average uplift after mods was 360%. Comparing the 13 pads that have base rank values, it is 416 and 685 respectively. Hypothetical calculations using the only perfectly balanced pet, MOA, will tell us that the impact of new mods will be 40%, the impact of shield resistance buffs will be 10%. Jin, the only sentinel with a self-revive precept which used to be 90 seconds, is replaced with 6 seconds cooldown for every energy orb picked up and 300 overshield per orb after reviving, that is a maximum of 1200 in just 4 orbs. And given the mods of sentinels, you'd have to pick up 4 orbs in 1 second and you'd already be revived. And pack leader are turning from overpowered percentage based heal to a flat value that also overflows into overguard capped at 1100 which is 12 hits. Early game mods that almost no one has a reason to use and we have better replacement are getting triple their health value. But at least Loyal Companion is becoming a completely new mod. When your frame falls under 35% health, the pet will be taking aggro for 30 seconds. This will only trigger every minute. The hard reset mod on Parazon is finally gonna be usable. 10 seconds skip on every mercy finisher is kinda good. Massive simplification to fire up. It will give 5% heat per every sentinel hit, up to 100, and reset if the sentinel fire is interrupted for 5 seconds. It was crazy overcomplicated. It does multiplicative heat damage to existing heat mods, but only under these conditions. Actually incomprehensible without the wiki. Good riddance. Spare parts becomes a new mod salvage scanner. It marks an enemy for 5 seconds of extra loot on kill every 15 seconds. I'm already feeling good about the upcoming second half of rework, they will be touching the pet abilities. The new mods were supposed to be one third of the entire rework, but they weren't ready to be shown here. They did show four of them in the dev stream. What should we call them? The name's Bond. James Bond. No. Casino Unreal Pet Mods. It would surprise me if this worked on Sentinels. The only existing clone mod is for Hounds, and they are significantly worse, no abilities, and they can only attack and get aggroed. There have to be some hidden variables here. Bonus energy on pet kill. That is not something done easily, especially if the pets still don't have modable weapons. And, and not a lot of the pet weapons are any decent in DPS. Basically only two robotic weapons have decent DPS, Hellstrom and Veriglas. 
it could be very spammable. There are many frames that can generate energy very quickly, even without a helmet. There is one frame completely ideal for this. There is no competition. Get a hint. Extreme violence. 3 second revive reduction on a hatch or kill is definitely useful. Just don't expect anything other than gas or electric to do headshot kills. The other DOT status types deal damage directly to the body. And if your pet actually gets 50% crit, you get 60% crit chance to any weapon. You can expect this to be stable and crit based in setups. They should just flip the sentence order around because that second one means the pet shield guide. Oh, oh. The pet shield guide is real. You may think that 1200 is kinda high, but this is the new pet order. 32% of the pets can do that with just redirection. Oh my god! And the rest of them can use link redirection, and they will be covered between 38 to 79% of all the frames that have shields. And because they all have 1200 over shields as well, it's basically gonna be up most of the time. This might be a bit too work in progress. Airborne kills are extremely easy. Headshots not so much, but this is quite strong. Those bonus stats are really good, because a lot of pets can't move independently, and a lot of them don't have any modable weapons. The only details we have are from Pablo. There's gonna be 14 of these new mods, and all of them are gonna be dual stats. And this workshop only gave us the one detail, they're coming into Fortuna, Citus and Deimos pet vendors, unless they decide differently. And based on that, we can expect them to be split into three batches based on their type. Because the only vendors selling mods now are the Wind Kids, the cost should be somewhere between 7 and half k and 20k per mod. Also, they're not set mods, they don't have set effects. I predict that you will be only able to equip one of a type just like the Hound mods. And finally, consistency upgrades. Rolling through the firewall of a Fire Eximus will now work on your pet. And whatever interactions we had to make pets overshoot and overguard are now gonna be standard and work just like the frames. I know that at least the Stanex Ult Augment did give your pet both of these before. I also spotted the change Pablo mentioned in the workshop that was only found in this footage from Accessibility Workshop. Your pet is now going to have the species icon right next to it. There are three ways to apply health increase to your frame, Chroma, Arcane Blessing and Wisp's health mode. Only the health mode doesn't require the link mod, so it's the only one that double dips. This might change. The only ability or arcane that increases actual max shields is Chroma's Electric Elemental Ward. It does require shield link. Linked shields never shared over shields, and this one is most likely not going to change. What part of the Vulpa final meta is dying? The part where only one pet species is actually usable. So many people are just stuck with them because nothing else has decent invulnerability or self revive. They just can't use the pets they want in high levels. That's why the Vulpa meta is at least going to take a big hit. There's even more good news about the reworks from Pablo's Twitter. The mods that previously hinged on TechMod set or Citrine's passive will not need them anymore and just work on their own as they should have. So how should you prepare for this? Max out the standing in Citus, Fortuna and Demos and you should be able to get 5 mods from each and if you don't have them, get the 3 primed pet mods or just make for more space for them. Burrow did not bring them for quite a while, so they will be returning soon, but there already was a Burrow recently, so you'll have to wait. The strongest two pet weapons are this. Hellstrom for AoE status primer. It is basically a rocket launcher. And for single target, the Verglas. It's a laser, which is actually a full-on copy of the Glaxion. Here's the build. To get the Hellstrom, you must be rank 5 with Solaris United and buy the blueprint for 10k. K 
crafting takes a whole day. But the most annoying part is ranking up, because you need to farm the bonds. There is a meta for them. Just repeat the first stage. The Vergrass comes only bundled with Nautilus. That means you'll have to farm Neptune Proxima, 6% in Ice Mine Sight Objective, and 4.5 if you're doing defense in B or C, for some reason. But that defense is the worst style in the game. Every part is tradable, but they're so expensive they can be even the same as the market value. Not a good deal if you don't already have some. I put A and B together, and the result is that the average pet tanking goes from a half of an average frame to double, something like this. I hope this video helped you learn something or update your priorities. If you can help the channel, I should have links in the description.